Hey, it's Lemon. Welcome to the Backlogs. Dark Souls has made a lot of changes to its gameplay over the years, one of which was adding weapon arts in Dark Souls 3. Personally, I enjoyed the idea. It made every weapon feel a bit more unique, gave it some character, you know? But what about Dark Souls 1? Well, while not entirely fleshed out, this game actually had its own version of weapon arts as well. Specific weapons, when used properly, had unique attack animations that used durability instead of a mana bar. Definitely a lesser system, to be sure, but hey, it had to start somewhere. So, in celebration of that mechanic finally finding its feet and making its way to what will hopefully be its magnum opus in Elden Ring, today we're going to beat Dark Souls 1 using only weapon arts. Let's go over the rules. First, we can only use weapons that have a weapon art. If a weapon has a skill or attack that costs durability to use, then it can be used in this run. Second, we can only use weapon art attacks to cause damage. Third, no cheating or exploits. And fourth, we have to attempt to beat every boss in the game. Simple enough, right? Well then, without further ado, let's get into it. Is what I would say, but we've actually got a sponsor for today's video. And it's Raid Shadow- <laughs> Nah, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Actually, today's video is sponsored by, uh, me? God, I'm bad at this. No wonder sponsors give you a script. Anyway, here's a loading bar in case you want to skip to the challenge run, but I'm just here to announce that starting today, for the very first time, Backlog's merch is available for purchase. Introducing the official Backlog's pin. Designed by yours truly, this pin is sure to make all of your friends, family, and coworkers say, who? That's right. Now you too can show your support for the channel by pinning this little guy onto your favorite bag, coat, or pillowcase. Maybe not that last one, but you get the idea. A link to the store is in the description down below, and the first 15 orders can even upgrade their pin to have metal clutch clasps. Quantities are limited, so buy yours today! Is... is he gone? Who was that? Was that me? Anyway, let's get into it. I started as the bandit, because I wanted as much strength as I could possibly get, you'll see why in a minute, then made my way through the asylum. Obviously, there's no way to get a weapon with a weapon art this early in the game, so I'm going to have to punch my way out. Riveting! After what felt like years, the Asylum Demon goes down. Easy enough, but let's make sure we never have to go through something like that ever again. After taking Velka's taxi service, I arrive at Firelink Shrine, where I immediately dump all of my souls into levels. What levels we choose is going to be very important for this run, since we have such a wide variety of weapons we're going to want to use. To start, I just want to make sure I have 10 dexterity and as much strength as I can muster. I head on down the elevator, use my master key on Blighttown's back door, then navigate my way to the bonfire. Did I lose you? What about now? Yeah, you know where I'm going, don't you? I make my way down through the trees, collecting some stamina regen as I go, then pass Free Willy, who has seen better days. Just hasn't been the same since his movie debut. Into the dark we go, until we find our new best friend. Hey. Hey you. Can I borrow your tail? Oh, yeah, sure fam. I'm not using it. Have at it. Wait, really? But are, are you sure? Yeah, it'll grow back after another century or so. It's cool. After several minutes of punching, and I do mean minutes, I was starting to wonder if it was even possible to punch off the dragon's tail. So, as a sign of good faith, I decided to devote myself to the Dragon Bro Covenant. My life for a sword. Seems like a fair trade. And wouldn't you know it, that's all it took. Tail removed, dragon greatsword obtained. Nice. But our new weapon isn't without its drawbacks. The weapon art is on the two-handed strong attack, which means I'm going to need 34 strength before I can even start to use it. Not exactly ideal, but nothing a few poppables and some soul farming can't fix. Before I forget, I make sure to grab the repair box. While it won't be our only method of repairing our weapons, it'll definitely carry us through the early game. I also made sure to double check and see if the weapon art works if you don't meet the requirements. I think we can definitively say that it doesn't. God, it's my first t-ball game all over again. Using the master key yet again, I head on down into Havel's Tower, out into Darkroot Basin, and back into the Undead Parish. From here, it's as simple as dodging past all of the enemies, unlocking the ladder shortcut, and repeating the dragon grind technique ad nauseum. Unlimited souls, ripe for the taking. Excuse me for a moment, would you? Okay, so, got the strength required, just need to get used to the moveset. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I can get used to that. Now, something worth noting is the uses. Those of you who've seen my crystal ring shield run know this is going to be an issue. And for the dragon greatsword, it's much worse. This weapon art can only be cast seven times before the weapon breaks, which means about five of those casts are going to be at full damage, while the last two will be reduced. Not great. So, with that in mind, we're going to have to push ahead as fast as we can and get some more weapons to make up for our limited casts. I decided to test out the damage against the Taurus Demon. It doesn't look like enough damage, but I actually missed with half of the attack. 
The weapon art actually does huge damage if you hit with both the blade and the shockwave. I just had to aim better. Thinking I wouldn't give him the satisfaction of killing me, I rolled off the edge. Apparently he had the same idea though. Oh god! <laughs> what are you doing? No, why? Why did you do that? <laughs> oh man. Does that count? Considering I could have gone back to get the Drake's Tail Sword, and considering my damage was supposed to be much higher with the Great Sword, it's safe to say we could have beaten the Taurus Demon pretty easily. I also really don't want to restart the run, so... Speaking of the Drake's Tail Sword, let's get that real quick. There we are. This weapon gets 12 casts in total, with about 9 being full damage. So that should help. With both weapons in hand, I'm feeling pretty confident in my damage output. Let's give it a real test, shall we? First, the Drake Sword. It has surprisingly long reach, and the damage is nothing to scoff at either. With the Drake Sword alone, I was able to almost finish off the first Gargoyle. I probably could have killed him with the reduced damage, but better safe than sorry. After equipping my Greatsword, I reduced the first Gargoyle to bits, then finally get my aim right and hit the second Gargoyle for 887 damage! Uh, okay. I, I guess that's what it looks like when you hit with both parts of the attack. Anyway, that's one bell down. One to go. At this point, I was feeling pretty overconfident, and someone in chat mentioned how cool it was going to be when I finally got Grant, the giant holy hammer. And, in my hubris, I had it in my head that you could get Grant before you placed the Lord Vessel. The Leroy invasion is outside the Lord Vessel fog wall, after all. And besides, it's not like Pinwheel is going to put up much of a fight. That's the real one. There it is. Ow, 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 what the hell? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> what is this run? Then, in another volley of poor decision making, I decided to rest at the bonfire in the Tomb of Giants. You know, just in case. And after becoming human and mentally preparing for Leroy's invasion, I made my way over to the fog wall. Paladin. Paladin. Buddy, you're... You're embarrassing me in front of the people. <laughs> oh no. Fuck. <laughs> That's not good. Well, shit. Yeah, Paladin Leroy doesn't invade without the Lord Vessel. Learn something new today. But hey, at least there's nothing too difficult between me and Firelink. <sighs> okay, after about an hour of getting Rick rolled to death, I finally made it out of the catacombs. Moving on, the Capra Demon fight isn't too bad. The trickiest part of the whole thing was finding the time to actually get a cast off. Eventually, I realized that being naked wasn't exactly the best idea, and with a little luck, was able to take out the dogs with one swing. After that, it was just a matter of hitting Capra with shockwaves until he died. Good Gwyn. It's not even fair, is it? I don't know why they even bother resisting at this point. I goof off with the Titanite Demon for a little bit, then make my way to the Moonlight Butterfly. While the Butterfly is probably not going to be that hard, ah, 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 it's important in a different way. The Butterfly actually marks the first boss we've encountered whose soul can be made into a boss weapon later on. A weapon that has a weapon art, I might add. But considering we've already tested that weapon to death in a previous video, I think we'll pass on that one. So moving on, I try my hand at water skiing, Ah, shit. Then sprint my way through the rest of the depths until I get to the Gaping Dragon. This boss is significant, not because it's hard, but because it has our next weapon. And it's a good thing, too. Due to some sloppy aiming, I actually ran out of durability for both of my dragon weapons. How's the damage? Y yeah, 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 it's, it's pretty good. Well, might as well keep moving on. I do some minor panicking while traversing Blight Town, grab power within while simultaneously testing out the Great Axe a bit more, then get to work on defeating everyone's second favorite spider lady. Hmm, looks like we're finally starting to hit the damage fall off. Took long enough. This isn't a simple problem to solve either. For those unfamiliar with the dragon weapons, many players call them trap weapons for one reason. They do great damage in the early game, but don't scale with stats. They also aren't easily upgraded since they require dragon scales. We're not quite in the danger zone just yet, but it's definitely getting closer. But with Quaylag out of the way, that's both bells rung. Time for Sen's Funhouse. But before we go, let's make sure we've got everything prepared so we don't have to make a long trip back from Anor Londo. As some of you are probably already commenting, the Iron Golem's soul can actually be used for an axe. An axe that is a weapon art. You're picking up what I'm putting down. So to make sure we're ready for said axe, I make sure to get some large titanite and upgrade my axe as high as it'll go. I also make sure to demolish this mimic for the lightning spear it's hiding. We can't use the spear, but we can downgrade it into a spear plus 10 and eventually turn that into a spear we can use. Wheels within wheels. But with all my preparations out of the way, it's time to take on the Iron Golem. hee -ya! For God's sake, why do I even bother with this stupid sword? Between the Great Axe doing significant work and the Great Sword finishing the job, this boss never stood a chance. 
If a boss doesn't move quickly, I can smash him to bits pretty fast. Good thing all the bosses stand still, am I right? Reaching in Orlando, I show the painting guardians what a good time looks like, silently reflect on the fact that this bonfire is lonely without Solaire. At least he's safe. Then make friends with the local golem so that we can get some new weapons made. A few popped souls later, and voila, golem axe acquired. I've never used it before, but hopefully it lives up to the hype. A level or two into strength, and we can use it. <laughs> I mean, it looks strong. Guess we better test it properly. And what better way to test a weapon you've never tried before than against some of the hardest bosses in the game? Oh, I guess I should actually have it equipped first. Ow, okay, would you calm down? Honestly, can I have one minute of peace before you murder me? Okay, round two. I'll be honest, the damage? Not bad. Not great, by any stretch, but considering it has some decent range, I think we can work with this. That said, maybe this wasn't the best fight to learn how to use this weapon. Hornstein and Smo already don't play fair, so there's no real reason to handicap myself further. This fight probably wouldn't be that bad if I could just murder Ornstein first. But unfortunately for me, Ornstein's soul can be used for weapon arts and crafts, and I've already poured a bunch of levels into dexterity to account for it. Some cost and all that, can't give up now. Eventually, I decide that attacking Smo with the greatsword is the way to go, since it gets him out of the way as fast as possible. And now that he's dead, I can take my time, relax, and... Why do you hate me? Not gonna lie, this part took quite a while to figure out. Between some wonky hitboxes, my weapon's slow attack speed, and my rapidly depleting sanity, I just couldn't get past this fight. And the few times I did get past the first phase, Super Ornstein's loose definition of a hitbox always knocked me back to square one. If I could just use my greatsword the whole fight, we'd probably be fine, considering how much damage it does. But unfortunately, I didn't have the foresight to grab some repair powder before coming to Anorlando. <laughs> and, and it's not like I'm gonna walk all the way back. Okay, got my repair powders, got my sword, now I just gotta get rid of this asshole. The nice thing about having repair powder is that my greatsword is now, technically, a ranged weapon. Pretty helpful, that. Combine that with a slowly developing understanding of this weapon's timing, and the proper times to counterattack, and this fight is finally over. Blah blah blah, just give me the Lord Vessel, damn it. Got a reputation to restore. Oh, before we go, I also made the Dragon Slayer Spear. God, I hope it was worth it. Lord Vessel placed, Tomb of Giants revisited, and with just a hint of frustration, there he is, Paladin Leroy, in the flesh. You, sir, made me look bad in front of a live audience. Prepare to die! Um, please tell me I get his weapon if I reload the game. Well, shit. Eh, whatever, I'm over it. Oh, while I'm here, let's test out our new spear. I put 15 levels into decks for that? Well, in case it hasn't become increasingly obvious, we've finally hit that point. That point that seems to happen in all of my runs, where the scales tip hard in one direction or the other. Usually, the scales tip in my favor, but not this time. With the weapons I have at my disposal, I'm pretty much stuck with how well they do. Almost all of them scale poorly, or not at all, and every single one requires upgrade materials that are a bit hard to come by. Combine that with their slow attack speeds, and you've got a pretty bad time on your hands. I was starting to feel a little defeated, if I'm being honest, so I took a minute to collect some easy wins. The stray demon moves nice and slow, so that's him out of the way. And Gwendolyn takes their sweet time to get out of the way of my attacks as well, so that's another easy boss down. And after tenderizing the undead dragon for his scales, I took the fight to Priscilla with some AoE slams. What's up, girl? She may not be an actual dragon, but we may as well let this weapon do something useful. God, I'm writing this script like two weeks later and I'm still salty about the damn thing. Unfortunately, that's all the side bosses I had left, so we have to return to the main storyline again. Nita was proving difficult, so I decided to visit Hogwarts instead and see what Uncle Seat's been up to. Show of hands, how many of you have tried to get Seat's tail before? Now how many of you have failed miserably, crushed under one of his stupid tentacle limbs? Hm, <laughs> yeah, me too. But wouldn't you know it, of all the runs I've ever done, this is the only run where I was actually able to get his tail drop on the first try. Turns out letting him smash his own crystal, then doing upwards of 1200 damage to the tip of his tail, works pretty well. Who knew? Dark Souls couldn't let me have that win, of course, and immediately cursed me. But hey, Moonlight Greatsword. Worth it. Let's pick up the pace a bit. I cured my curse, did some quick grinding in the Tomb of Giants, set some boundaries with Seath, and bam, First Lord's soul, got. That wasn't so bad. I decided to make my way into Izalith next, but rather than walk my boy Ceaseless off a cliff like I usually do, I decided to give actually fighting him a try. It's pretty boring, if I'm being honest, but it was fun learning how to quick equip my weapons so that I could actually roll away in between attacks. It's the little things in life, you know? I mean, he's the largest enemy in the game, so that doesn't really apply here, but I continued to make my way through the boss gauntlet, clearing out the demon fire sage, followed by accidentally cutting off the centipede demon's tail. I actually forgot that his individual limbs turn into their own enemies. So weird. But hey, got the lava ring early. Needless to say, this fight becomes trivial once the threat of being forced into the lava was removed. 
Another boss down. It's a shame the ring doesn't protect your eyes from the lava, though. Wait, hold up. A ring that adds a filter to the game? Carl, write that down! I bully the last Witch of Izalith a bit. Come on, get up, you can do it. Then, to really add some salt in the wound, I decided to kill the Bed of Chaos with my most worthless weapon. One, two, three, four, five! Nah, shit, that wasn't technically a weapon art skill, but whatever, close enough. And with those souls, combined with a bit of grinding, we finally have high enough stats to try out the Moonlight Greatsword. While the damage isn't great, since I have bare minimum intelligence to use it, it is worth noting that Sword has not one, but two weapon arts. That's pretty neato. Can definitely see why this weapon makes an appearance in literally every FromSoft game ever made. But before we go after the Four Kings, we're gonna need a few things. The Abyss Walker Ring for one, but I feel like my Estus Flask could use some boosting as well. Quailana's the easiest to reach, maybe she can help me out. There we are. What? What did you think I meant? Well, might as well continue with the Despicable Axe. Goodbye, sweet pupper. Sorry about your dad. Alright, got my armor, got my ring, got my big boy slams. Let's do this. Okay, not gonna lie, this fight was an absolute mess. Locking onto the kings themselves is worthless, because any time I do, I miss the shockwave attack. And because I'm taking so long to get the job done, there are now multiple kings running around who like to take pot shots at me every now and again. Very helpful, thank you. The frustrating part? I almost got them on the first try. Had I just rested at the Firelink bonfire beforehand, I would have had enough healing to tank my way through the fight. No, 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 no! All right, round two. No chances taken this time around. Got my Estus buffed up, got my Humanities on the hotbar. I even did some mental gymnastics and realized that, much like Priscilla, using an AoE attack instead of a line shockwave is the better choice here. It takes some time, but eventually the kings go down. And then there was one. You know, had you asked me which of the four Lord Souls would be the hardest to get earlier, there's no way I would have guessed it would be Nito. But, as with all things, patience and experience go a long way. With all of my new knowledge combined, heavy armor, AoE attacks, and a buffed up Estus Flask, this fight goes from being one of the hardest times I've had, to an inevitable victory over time. Adios, Bone Daddy. Thanks for the mental exercise. And with that last victory, it's time to challenge the DLC. Normally, these challenge runs tend to die in Old Lordran, due to the DLC bosses having immense health pools, aggressive tactics, and increased resistances. But I don't know. Got a good feeling this time around. Take your lumps, you amalgam of black. So yeah, DLC bosses still hit hard, but after all the struggle busting I did on this boss with previous runs, I've learned a thing or two about this guy's patterns. He even nabbed me a tailwind. So that's neat. A few solid hits and lucky dodges later, and the Guardian goes down easier than he ever has before. A promising start. Next up is Artorius the Abyss Walker, and Run Killer. This man has been a thorn in my side for the past several runs. Time to end that. Uh, uh, next time. Next time we end that. Funnily enough, I really do take it to him on the next try. Turns out, this little spin rush move he does here is easily punishable by my Greatsword's weapon art, which means so long as I'm patient and wait it out, we can beat him with minimal risk. And wouldn't you know it, I do just that. Man, that feels good. It's been a while since I was able to see the rest of the DLC. Wonder if it's as great as I remember. Oh yeah, just like I remember. After grabbing a few necessary odds and ends, I try to make my way through the town. Keyword there was try. Guys, please, come on, you took my lunch souls already, can you just let me through? I even took the time to fight this thing. Though I'll be honest, I still don't know what the hell it is. Lufa? Are you Manus's Lufa? But after several embarrassing deaths, we're finally here. The father of the abyss himself. Let's do this. Much like Artorius, this fight is all about finding the one or two moments where it's safe to perform an action. Finding the few seconds between animations to heal or repair my weapons was critical, and learning which way to angle my weapon for maximum damage also took some time. Considering it's been a few months since I've actually fought Manus, I died quite a few times. Still surprises me how much range he gets with that googly arm of his. Another problem I found myself running into was that I was doing too much damage to him. During certain combos, if I went in for the attack, it would knock him immediately into his next attack animation, which predictably resulted in pain. It took a few tries, and a couple dozen deaths, but after about an hour or two of attempts, I was able to finally put it all together. One more DLC boss to go. The last boss before Gwyn himself. Calamite. I decide to give Go the honor of softening him up a bit for me. Damn, nice shot. Thank you. Then go after the Black Dragon itself. The damage isn't too bad, I think we'll be alright. In all honesty, I probably could have beaten this boss on the first try, but my pride got in the way. I wanted that tail. Give me the tail! Not, uh, not exactly what I meant. 
I think we both know how it all went down from here. I tried to get the tail, Calamy played hard to get, and I lost several hours of my life trying to get a weapon that I'd only be able to use on a single boss. It took longer than I'd care to admit, but eventually I realized I was just being stubborn and decided to end the fight. Probably wasn't that great of a weapon anyway, if we're being honest. You can actually buff it with resins. What do you mean you can buff it with resins? Ah well, can't be helped now. Time for Gwyn, the final boss. How's the damage look? Oh, holy shit. And a stagger? Oh no, it's consistent too. Oh, you poor soul. Well, not exactly the most climactic final fight in the world, but as any Dark Souls player will tell you, that's kind of the whole point. And with that, the run is over. That was a nice change of pace. Not only did I get to use a bunch of weapons I normally wouldn't touch, but I got to see some animations I've never seen before too. Might have to give this run a try throughout the rest of the Dark Souls series. But until then, take care of yourselves, stay safe, and I'll see you all again soon.